Good morning. Welcome to worship on the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Also a very happy Independence Day weekend to you. Hopefully you are enjoying some time together um, with loved ones virtually or perhaps in person. Uh, today we continue in the long summer season of ordinary time and especially appropriate for this weekend, Jesus tells us to come to him and find rest. I hope that you are having some rest, whatever that means for you during this very strange and difficult time. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you can provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Your sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Romans. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord Christ. Christ. I invite the children to come join me around the TV or the iPad so we can have a little moment together. Sometimes it's good to have rest, isn't it? We've had a lot of time to rest these last several weeks and months, and maybe if you're like me, you're going a little stir crazy. Right? You want to get outside and play with your friends. You say, I don't, I'm sick of resting. I've been at home. I've been in my room. I've been on the computer, the TV. I don't want to rest. I want to go outside and play in a bouncy house or go for a run around the block or go in a swimming pool, do something fun. Why would I want to rest after all this time being inside? The rest Jesus is talking about is not only rest for our bodies but rest for what he calls our souls, our spirits. Are there ever times when you feel that just something isn't quite right with life? Maybe you're feeling anxious, afraid. Maybe it feels like nothing is going quite right. Or maybe you're even angry with God and the way things are going in the world. Maybe even you are mad at yourself. You've said something or done something that you regret, like Paul said in the second reading. I do the things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I do want to do. That is what Jesus is inviting us to give to him this morning. Not just the tiredness of our bodies, but the tiredness of our spirits. Those places in us that are feeling just whew, exhausted. And Jesus says, you can come to me and let that go. You don't have to carry that all by yourself, whether that's anger or fear or guilt. You don't have to carry it, because that's heavy to carry that stuff around all the time. Jesus says, come to me, lay it down, I will give you rest. So I pray this morning that whatever it is that's troubling you, 
whatever it is that is making you feel not quite right, that you can give that to Jesus and know that he holds that with you. He carries that with you, so you are not all by yourself. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bid us come to you and to give you all of our burdens, whatever we are carrying, and you will give us rest. It is a relief to release all of this into your arms, to know that you hold us, that you love us no matter what. Bless all these children wherever they may be, in Jesus' name. There are some moments in life you wish you had on tape, but in this particular instance, we needed every free hand available, and even then we just barely made it. In the process of Brianna and I getting married almost three years ago and her moving into the parsonage, the day came for her to move her furniture out of her old apartment. Brianne had this old sectional sofa in her living room, which we weren't going to keep, but which needed to find a new home so the next tenant could move in. For the life of me, I don't know how she ever got this thing into that apartment, especially up the narrow winding staircase to the second floor, because even with six people trying every possible angle, we could not find a way to get it back down. So we moved to plan B. I went to the hardware store and got some rope, and we developed what could generously be described as a kind of pulley system, whereby we would lower the couch over the balcony railing, which was made of plastic, to the people waiting below. It was insane. But it did work. And the reason it worked was because we use the rope and the railing as a kind of yoke, a yoke which allowed us to spread out the weight of this massive sofa among multiple people, to lighten it so we could get it down together. That's what a yoke is for, after all, at least the kind Jesus speaks of in our Gospel reading. A yoke is not supposed to be an added burden that is placed upon you. It is a tool that makes it possible to carry heavy things. Things that, if you were left to your own strength, your own ability, might feel impossible to bear. And a good yoke, when made by a good carpenter, is not some generic piece of wood or a jerry-rigged pulley system, but is custom-made so it's not rough on the animals and actually helps them bear the weight of whatever they're pulling together. Now, it should be said that yokes have not always been used in this way. Like any tool that can be used for good, yokes have also been used to harm, to subjugate and control. Yokes were used by slave masters to control their slaves, to keep them bound together, and to extract from them the greatest amount of hard labor under unspeakable conditions. They can also be used to abuse animals, forcing them to do or carry more than is safe or humane. As much as yokes can lighten the load, they can also hold people in chains. They can be a symbol of sharing the load or a symbol of exploiting people who already have too little. This is important for us to know as we hear Jesus talk about his yoke, the yoke he invites us to take on, the yoke that will lighten our load and give us rest. He is not speaking here to the comfortable, to those who would use or exploit the labor of other people to enrich themselves. Nor is he speaking of some cheap spiritual consolation that allows evil to remain for those who are hurting, lest anyone become uncomfortable. No, Jesus is speaking to the weary, to the tired, to the fed up and taken for granted, to those who have been fighting and pushing for so long that they have all but given up on rest. And this is good to know, beloved, because the burdens we are carrying right now, individually and as a society, are so 
heavy. We have lived now through almost four months that have challenged us in ways we never could have imagined. One day we were at work or at school, out for dinner, exercising at the gym, meeting up with friends and family, coming to church, all while not having a clue in the world what this thing called Zoom was. And the next day we were locked down in our homes with toilet paper and Lysol if we were lucky, with the added expectation that you, can, you must juggle work, parenting, and school at the same time while not being able to do anything that feels like pressing the release valve. That is a burden. During this time, billionaires in America, that is to say 500 people, have seen their wealth grow by half a trillion dollars, all while 43 million Americans, including some of you, have lost work and filed for unemployment. That, too, is a burden. And then there's the burden that has been carried by black people in America for 400 years, the legacy of slavery, discrimination, wealth inequality, and police brutality, and who have been begging for people to listen, to share that burden, to take on that yoke so that it isn't so crushing, hoping perhaps that this time it's really different. Can we just take a moment and acknowledge the weight of it all? We are not all carrying the same thing, but we are all carrying something. And many of us are carrying a lot. I see you. Jesus sees you. We are all doing the best we can, and it hasn't always been perfect, but we are making it through this together. Maybe one good thing about this pandemic is that it has reminded us of that, that we really do need each other, and not just for moving furniture. We need each other to survive. The reason Massachusetts is leading the nation in recovery is because we have been putting other people before ourselves, following those guidelines, wearing masks, sacrificing some of what we might want to do so that our neighbor is not put at risk. But beyond that, I think we have also been reminded of something deeper, something that we maybe took for granted. That in addition to all the ways we help each other, we also just need each other's presence. We need to be together. We need it in the same way that we need food and shelter and all the other things we use to answer that question. So how are you doing? I remember when I stopped answering that question, oh, we're fine, we have everything we need, because people aren't fine when they are cut off from their community, from their families, from the people who give them life. People also aren't fine when they need to protest for their right to exist, when their neighbors are more outraged by graffiti than the violence being inflicted on their bodies, when they hear the words, it's terrible what happened to that man, but. The march towards justice and equality requires everyone to show up, to see each other as one body whose fates are bound up together. Or as the Zulu concept of Ubuntu is sometimes translated in English, I am because we are. Infants know this as Jesus so clearly says. They know it instinctually, that they need other people in order to live. But adults sometimes forget it. Adults sometimes even take great pride in being able to push their way through their hard times all by themselves, and even look down on people who can't as weak or lazy. Jesus says this couldn't be farther from the truth. Come to me, all you who are weary, and carrying heavy burdens, he says, and I will give you rest. Rest is not a luxury. It is not something you earn by working hard enough. It is built into the creation and part of what it means to be human. And it is something that Jesus longs to offer us. Maybe for you that looks like physical rest, although I suspect that for many of you, the last thing you want to do right now is lay on the couch. You want to go outside, take a long run on the beach, go to your favorite restaurant and be with your friends. That day will come. 
but I invite you to ask yourself what's feeling heavy in your soul this morning. Maybe you've shared it with someone and maybe no one knows about it. Where is your spirit tired? Where does it feel like you are just going to break? Maybe it's your present circumstances, but maybe it's more of an inner struggle, like Paul in our second reading. I do the things I don't want to do. I don't do the things I do want to do. Who will rescue me from myself? Is there something like that going on that no one else could understand except Jesus? Whatever it is that burdens you, wherever you are feeling weak, tired, or hopeless, that is where Jesus meets you today. And like a gentle craftsman, he guides your arm into a yoke that was created just for you and for him to carry together. Even if you have no strength left, he will bear its full weight so that you can rest. Rest from needing to be perfect. Rest from the impossible circumstances this pandemic has placed upon you. Rest from having to carry the mantle of justice alone. Rest from the memory of those things you wish you hadn't done or wish you had. They are not yours to carry all by yourself anymore. Jesus has borne your cross in his cross. And that means that in wearing his yoke, you really are free. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us join together to pray to God, our stronghold, for all the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the phrase, in mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the church around the globe, where Christians are assembling for worship, protect them from viral infection. Where Christians are worshiping from home, grant them steadfastness in your word. Strengthen those believers who doubt your goodness. Bless pastors, deacons, and committee members as they serve our congregations in this difficult time. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, mercy. receive our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. Grant renewal to the air, the waters, and the lands. Save the animals whose natural habitat is being threatened by climate change or human carelessness. And direct us towards sustainable living. Preserve the fields of Kenya from locusts. Nourish our country's green spaces. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, receive our, our prayer. prayer. of racism and to assure equality for all. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, mercy receive, receive our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. Console the fearful, feed the hungry, house the homeless, shelter the runaways, heal the many who are newly afflicted with the coronavirus and guide researchers in discovering a vaccine. Visit the sick whom we name before you now. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, mercy receive our prayer. semester. We pray for the unemployed that they find jobs. We pray for medical workers that they remain healthy. We pray for the aged, especially those in care facilities, that they find companionship in your presence. Oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, mercy receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died, especially those whose names are known to you alone. Comfort all who mourn their dead, and at the end, bring us and all your people into eternal rest. O oh God, you are gracious and full of compassion. In mercy, mercy receive our prayer. Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with each other. you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Welcome once again to worship this morning on this holiday weekend. As always, but this is going to be the last week of this for a while, you're invited to our online coffee hour on Zoom, which you can access by clicking the link in the bulletin or in your email. But next Sunday, uh, July 12th, marks the first phase of our reopening as a congregation. We've, we've never been closed. Our building has been closed, but we have remained the body of Christ. But starting uh, next Sunday, we will have our service of the word online in the way we've been doing the last four months. You'll tune in from home to watch that. But then at 12 noon, you're invited to come to the fenced in area outside, um, just near where the driveway is. And we will have an in-person celebration of Holy Communion. Um, we will do this using social distance and wearing masks, of course, and using um, only one set of hands to prepare the bread and wine to minimize any uh, risk of infection. Um, we ask that you please bring your own chairs for this, if you have any lawn chairs from home, so we don't have to bring the ones here outside and sanitize them and all of that. But if you would like to participate in that, you are very welcome to come. We do ask that you sign up online with the link in your bulletin, um, flclin.org slash gather. That's so we can just have an idea of what the crowd size is going to be. And uh, in the case that somebody does become sick, we can have contact tracing and notify people. So we're looking forward to that. If the numbers keep going down by the uh, late summer, fall, hopefully we can have some sort of indoor gathering. But we're not quite there yet. Let's give thanks for the good work that everyone has been doing in the Commonwealth that we can be able to gather even in this small way. If you have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Also, the online video and conversation group on race will be starting um, this month. You can register for that online as well. I wish you a wonderful weekend. We thank God for the gift of our nation and for the freedom we have and the freedom, we, the responsibility we have for each other as well. May your celebrations be safe and joyful. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.